The most insidious thing in the world is nonsense that sounds just plausible enough to be listened to. And that is where we Demir thrive. Ask the right questions in the right way, and the truth is inevitable. One tiny peg pulled from a single wagon wheel, and an entire district grinds to a halt. So imagine the damage we do with a stolen secret or a truth told. We are the spy masters of Ravnica, and I am their leader, Lazav the Multifarious. Lazav the Multifarious is a sleeper hit from Guilds of Ravnica. Actually, since they're the Demir Guild Master, I suppose it's a sleeper cell hit. Either way, Lazav is able to take overwhelmingly powerful cards that were given balancing drawbacks and take all the power with none of the downside. For one blue and a black, yes, that's all, CMC2. I love it already for Commander. When Lazav the Multifarious enters the battlefield, surveil one, meaning look at the top card of your library. You may put it into your graveyard. For X, Lazav the Multifarious becomes a copy of target creature card in your graveyard with converted mana cost X, except its name is Lazav the Multifarious. It's legendary in addition to its other types, and it has this ability. This is incredible with the right commander build, which is why I activated our network of informants to tap the legendary Benny Smith to help me with this assignment. I convinced Mr. Smith it was in his best interest to help me to build a Lazav deck worthy of, well, me. If you'd like to see more work from Benny, I've included links to some of his commander content in this video's description. Lazav's ability is a cool way to become what they need to be based on the circumstances at hand. For example, copy Invisible Stalker if you get targeted by removal, or just want to slip through unblocked. Copy Bantu the Glorified if you need to be indestructible and copy Phyrexian Dreadnought if you just need to be a 12-12 in order to smash face. Add to our list utility-style creatures like Withered Wretch, Jace's Archivist, and Glen Elendra Archmage, and you have a Ravnik can-do commander for any situation. Let's begin with some of the sinister goals of this deck. It's hard to beat Lazav copying Necrotic Ooze and picking up the activated abilities of all creatures in all graveyards. Necrotic Ooze is too black and too for a 4-3 Ooze, which as long as Necrotic Ooze is on the battlefield, it has all activated abilities of all creatures in all graveyards. The combo with Necrotic Ooze is to have Grimgrin, Corpseborn, and Bloodline Keeper in the graveyard. Then Necrotic Ooze, or Lazav copying the Ooze, can tap to make a 2-2 Vampire token with Bloodline Keeper's ability. Then use Grimgrin's ability to sack a creature to untap and get a plus one plus one token by sacking the 2-2 Vampire token. And keep doing so until you have all the d6s in the room stacked on Necrotic Ooze or Lazav. Then you can attack and kill someone, or if you are feeling spicy, copy Triskelion's ability and kill everyone. During all of this, cards like Training Grounds allow you to discount Lazav's ability by two, which is super sweet. And that's why Benny and I included some level up creatures that might be cool to switch between depending on circumstance. But first, looting and graveyard effects. We want to be able to dump cards from our hands into the graveyard, which is why we run looting cards such as Wharf Infiltrator, whose skulk ability is fun to copy to get Lazav past enemy lines before they become an out-of-control big monster. Jace's Archivist, Cryptbreaker, Merfolk Looter are all auto-includes in this deck as well, but our biggest value comes from Search for Azkanta. For one in a blue at the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. You may put it into your graveyard. Then if you have seven or more cards in your graveyard, you may transform Search for Azkanta. While the transformed as Kanta, the sunken rune, has value in and of itself, this is a case where just getting the ability to pitch into our own graveyard is super value. Looter Il Core is another good looter card, but also if it is in the graveyard, you can use it to make Lazav unblockable with Shadow. So, copy Looter, get past blockers, copy Dreadnought, smack for 12, Chef's Kiss. Great card for covering more than a few bases. Keep in mind a lot of these cards go through a life cycle of being cast from hand 
friend dying on the battlefield then getting used in the graveyard. Check this out. It's one for a 1-1 one, one, where for one black it gives itself infect. Lazav copies Asp, maybe also makes itself unblockable, copies Dreadnought, and wham, that's a one-shot kill against an opponent. Obviously, opponents nuking your graveyard is going to be an issue, so I've included a few answers like Trick Bind, Disallow, and Nimble Obstructionist to help. These three are our key counters because they protect the graveyard and can stop threats like a Bazooka Bomb. We also run a few general counter spells like Arcane Denial and Swan Song, etc. But the best strategy is not to go hog wild with filling the graveyard with too many options. So this list is not actually running too many self-mill cards. It's best to fill the graveyard with more precise moves and then just play out most of the creatures directly from hand to battlefield, have them die in the normal course of the game, and the occasional sacrifice as befitting Demir. Time to level up. We're running training grounds to shave two off Lazav's ability. However, this also works great with level up cards such as Enclave Cryptologist, Ghoul Draws Assassin, and Lighthouse Chronologist. Again, cast these from hand and benefit from the reduced level up costs. Or have Lazav copy from the graveyard. Level up counters placed on Lazav stay on Lazav no matter what he is. It's a good mana sink. Lighthouse Chronologist can earn us extra turns. Assassin is great spot removal, and Enclave Cryptologist, a favorite artwork of mine, by the way, rummages early and flat out draws late. Lazav and Surveil play nicely into the explore mechanic. Along those lines, Dead Eye Tracker is a way to control someone else's graveyard shenanigans. So when you explore, either you get some extra mana or potentially mill a key creature into the graveyard, while also putting a 1 1 counter on Lazav. Again, those counters stick, and it's just one more reason Lazov is sick. Am I right, fellow youngsters? Eh? Sick? Speaking of graveyard management, Withered Wretch is an extremely easy and effective way to copy and take out key spells in graveyards. We also run Ovenomancer, a gloriously good card for two and a blue. When Ovenomancer enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless you return three basic lands you control to their owner's hand. Tap to return Ovenomancer to its owner's hand and destroy target creature, it can't be regenerated. That creature's controller creates a 0-1 green sheep creature token. Never mind the hard cast, pitch Ovenomancer into the graveyard and copy it with Lazav, and you don't have to return the lands. So let's say someone is going to Darksteel Mutation Lazav. If Ovenomancer is in the graveyard, or possibly just in hand while you have a loot effect available, you can spend three, have Lazav copy Ovenomancer, destroy a creature, bounce Lazav to hand, fizzle the Darksteel Mutation of your opponents, and thus all they have left to show for it is a 0-1 Sheep. I'm sure that'll leave them saying, bah. Also, whenever you play an Ovenomancer, you make Mark Rosewater smile. This sort of trick is what we do with cards like Wall of Souls. A 0-4 defender, whenever Wall of Souls is dealt combat damage, it deals that much damage to target opponent or planeswalker. So say someone is attacking you with a massive Lord of Extinction, you could have Lazav copy Wall of Souls, block, and then the person attacking you is sad. Running cards such as Doom, Necromancer, and Whisper are great for bringing something from the graveyard to the battle field. And if you have either in your graveyard, Lazav can copy them, sacrifice himself, bring back something big, and then Lazav is just back in the command zone to be summoned again. Speaking of big and scary creatures, we're going to want to run Mortivor, Grimgrin as mentioned, and Bontu the Glorified, of course, for an indestructible god. And don't forget about that necrotic ooze for all the abilities. Mortivor is a lot of fun, and if it's on the battlefield, you can either cast or copy Ghoul Caller Gissa and have her destroy it to make a horde of zombies. Dece. Demir Houseguard is an interesting card because you can transmute it for any of our four mana creatures, including Necrotic Ooze, or even an Emergency Damnation. And then, once it is in the graveyard, Lazav can copy it, then sacrifice a creature and regenerate. Creatures higher up on our curve have cheap or free abilities, such as Arcanus the Omnipotent. At six mana, he's not cheap to copy, but if you do, a simple tap draws three cards. Another situation where Training Grounds helps out a lot. What about Tutors? For such a toolkit-based deck, we need to tutor to tool from our kit with. And Tomb, Buried Alive, and Corpse Connoisseur are the best fit. Honestly, if you have a Buried Alive in your opening hand, you'll likely be able to set yourself up for a quick kill. Just remember, there's no rule that says you have to do that. Corpse Connoisseur 
Connoisseur is a favorite of mine, because when Corpse Connoisseur enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a creature card and put that card into your graveyard. If you do, shuffle your library. With Entomb for three and a black, this is the tutor that keeps on teaching. Meanwhile, tutors like Demonic and Vampiric are not something we run, and that's because our target is the graveyard, and at that point we are just tutoring for our graveyard tutors. Most of the cards we're running are low mana cost anyway, so we want to lean into being fast and efficient. And along those lines, let's see the mana base. We're running 39 lands, which is a lot for a deck like ours, which is relatively low to the ground, but the reason behind this is we want to activate Lazav early and often. Mana Flood is not going to be an issue for this, and it's well worth ensuring we always hit our drops. Some key land cards we also run in addition to the usual lands and accelerants are Gaia Reach Sanitarium, High Market, and Meren the Moaning Well. Ultimately, this deck list should be a jumping off point for you. Do you see other creatures with cool abilities that Lazav can copy? Swap some out from this list for your own tools. And be sure to let me know what you'd pick in the comments below. And don't forget to check out the awesome commander content by the legend himself, Mr. Benny Smith. Working with Benny to develop this list was a dream come true for me, as I have always been a fan of his articles since before I even had a YouTube channel. Go check out the wealth of insight and information he has about Commander through the links below. And this video is brought to you by my and many other people's local game store, Card Kingdom, a brick and mortar pillar of this community, as well as the Patreon support of viewers such as you. These are the people that keep Talarian Community College going and growing strong. So thank you.